Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecture in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform a chi-square test for independence using Excel. So before we start, let's take a look at some data. Up here in the top left hand side, I have some data as a result of, a, of an opinion poll. And let's say we've conducted this poll using a simple random sample of 1000 voters. Our respondents were classified by gender, uh, male or female, and also by voting preference, whether they were going to vote for a left wing, centre or a right wing party. And the results are shown here in what we call a contingency table. Now this table shows a categorical data, our categories here are male and female on one side and left, centre and right wing on the other side. Uh, this type of test is also referred to as a two-factor chi-square test. So we want to ask the question, is there a gender gap? In other words, do men's voting preferences differ significantly from women's voting preferences? And let's say we're going to conduct this test at an alpha value of 0.05. As it's a stats test, we need to set out our null and alternate hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is that the gender and voting preferences are independent. In other words, that the two factors are independent of each other. And our alternate or research hypothesis is that the gender and voting preferences are not independent. And in our chi-square test for independence, we need to do two or three sets of calculations. We first of all need to calculate the expected frequency counts, then the chi-square statistic itself, and finally the number of degrees of freedom when we come to make a decision. So the key to conducting a, a chi-square test for independence in Excel is, first of all, we need to spread out our, our um, contingency table here. So I'm going to set up two new tables down here. So I'm going to do the calculations for males. And this is going to be the expected calculations, as I said, on the right-hand side. And I'm going to conduct the expected frequency. And I also want to do the expected frequency for the females as well. Uh, leave yourself plenty of rooms in between plenty of rows in between here as because you're doing plenty of calculations and this is the expected female calculation so the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to determine the expected number of males who were in the opinion poll that said they were going to vote for a left-wing party based on my data in the contingency table over on the right hand side here the formula for calculating the expected uh, value is the expected value is equal to nr and that's the number total number for the rows so for my males that's going to be in row 3 the total is 400 we multiply that by the uh, total for the columns in left wing in this case what we're doing so that's going to be 430 and then we divide that by the grand total which is a thousand in this case here so let's go ahead and do that watching out for, for preference so we want to type in equals and do the first bit in brackets uh, that's 400 multiplied by the column total for 30 closing bracket divided by the grand total i'm just following the formula here in the center i'm going to do the similar again except this time i'm going to change the column so it's 400 multiplied by value of 445 for the center and divide that by the grand total again you can see each of these calculations are very similar equal to for the right wing voters 400 multiplied by the total column for right wing and we divide that by 1000 so we can see here that we have an expected total of 172 males are going to vote left wing, 178 are going to vote for centre party and 50 are going to vote for right wing. Let's do very quickly the calculations for females this time, um, opening brackets again. This time I'm going to use the total for the female row which is 600, multiply that by the total for the column, first column, divide that by 1000 again. Um, same calculations for the next set multiply by 445 this time and divide that by the grand total and finally the number of expected right-wing voters is equal to 600 multiplied by 125 and for the last time divided by the grand total so now we have uh, in our contingency table all our observed values and we've now calculated the expected frequency counts for males and females in each of our three um, groups in the in the political category left center or right to calculate the chi-squared is the next uh, thing we need to do and in the pink box over here on the right hand side we have our chi-squared formula and we can see the chi-squared is equal to the sum of the total of all our observed values minus the expected value squared divided by our expected values the r and the c here again represent the row and the column so I'm going to do this step by step so as you can see how this works. You can do this all in one go, but I'm going to do it step by step. So the first thing I need to do is to calculate the O minus E, the observed minus the expected. So I'm going to do that first, just use O and E, observed minus expected. 
And then I need to, as you can see in the formula, I need to square that, so O minus E squared. And finally, you can see I need to divide that by the expected value, O minus E squared divided by E. And so I'm going to do that for the males, and I'm also going to do it for the females. So I'm just going to save myself a little bit of typing and copy that and paste those labels down here. So observe minus expected for a male left-wing voters. So the observed is, uh, I'm going to type enough calculations, very simple calculations here. The observed is 190 minus the expected, which is 172. Um, then I need to square that value. So I'm going to e equals uh, select cell B11 in this case here. Use the caret symbol and 2 to square that value. And finally, you can see that I need to divide that by the expected value. So that's equal to my value of 324 divided by the expected value, which is 172, and press Enter. Save myself some calculations. I'm going to copy those over for the center and right so using the Excel's fill handle tool in the bottom right hand corner here. And the total is, uh, I need is uh, these three values added together. I'm going to use Excel's auto sum tool to give me a total here of 5.3556. Similar calculations for the females down here. So I'm going to type in the observed for females 240 minus the expected, which is 258. And then I need to square that value. So minus 18 squared. And then I need to divide that by the expected value, 258. Give me those figures there. And I'm going to copy these values over to the center and right wing. And once again, I need for my chi-squared value to sum these three values up. And my chi-value then is the uh, sum of all of these two values here. So that's equal to 5.355 plus 3.57. That gives me a total of 8.926. Now, I don't know yet if that is a significant, uh, represents a significant chi statistic or not. So in order to determine this, I need, um, I need to be able to look up the chi distribution tables. And first of all, I need to know what the number of degrees of freedom are. The last formula here on the right-hand side in green tells us how to calculate the degrees of freedom. It's equal to the R, the number of rows, minus 1. Now, we've got two rows here, so that's um, 2 minus 1, which is 1. And we multiply that by the number of columns, minus 1. We have three columns, so 3 minus 1 gives us 2. So 2 multiplied by 1 overall gives us 2 degrees of freedom. So I'm just going to write that in here, 2 degrees of freedom. And so now I'm able to look up some uh, the chi distribution table. So just switch over to this over here. And we can see uh, for two degrees of freedom, we're going along the second row here. And I've highlighted it here for the value of uh, that we're testing at, which is half equal to 0 0.05. My critical value is 5.991. So let me put that in here. My crit value is 5.991. Now we can see that our chi stat is greater than our chi crit. And that allows us then to reject H0. So our result here is that we cannot accept the null hypothesis uh, that there is the gender and voting preferences are independent. So we are, reject that in favor of the alternative hypothesis that the gender and voting pre preferences are not independent. In other words, we conclude that there is a relationship between gender and voting preference. So that's how you conduct a chi-square test for independence in Excel. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.